All right, so we're going to talk about Philly, but I want to talk about it in the context, something I texted you today. We've said all year that the East was better than the West, and the East had a better record against the West this year. And just in general, we've talked about the East a little bit more, and it's like, oh, look at the West. What a dumpster fire. Oh, my God, it's so bad. Oh, Sacramento might be too seed. I look at it now, I think the West is better than the East. I think they have more dangerous teams in the West. The East, the, the arrows pointing down for a lot of the teams. The Knicks, I felt a lot better about them a month ago. I felt a hundred times better about Philly a month ago. Um, you see Brooklyn going down. There's some chi Chicago, Toronto playing friskiness, but you can't take it seriously. Miami looks like dog shit. And I, I don't know if they're rope doping me to get getting confidence <laughs> against them for the 2 7 matchup against the Celts, but whatever. The Celts certainly have been as good this month, although I think them and Milwaukee have the two best odds. But I was looking at FanDuel, Milwaukee, Boston have the two best finals odds. Eight of the next 10 teams are West teams. And in general, like Phoenix, Denver, Memphis is playing better. Golden State, if Wiggins comes back, we know we'll take all of them seriously. Um, you go on and on. There's probably six teams that I could see in the finals. Can we say now that the West is at least even with the East? Okay, it depends on how we want to measure it, right? Because one through three, the East is better. Are, are we in agreement on that? Like Milwaukee, like Milwaukee, I guess, at least in terms of seeding, it depends on how you want to classify Phoenix because honestly, Phoenix could be the best number four seed of all time if they enter right. into the playoffs more or less healthy. Hard to imagine a more compelling four seed than that. But in terms of seeding, one through three feels like the East. Four through 12 is probably better in the West. 13 to 15, yeah. to the extent that it matters. Yeah, who cares? Is, you know, not really, not really a factor in this play. But there was an interesting stat from John Schumann of NBA.com this week that basically from 1999 until 2021, the West had a winning record against the East in 21 of those 22 seasons. Unbelievable. And the, the last two years, it shifted a little bit to the East. Certainly notable, but as you're saying, like if, if you're better in one conference four through 10 or four through 12, how we're measuring this stuff, I don't know. Like, I don't think the eighth best team in the West is going to win the championship, but there's just more good teams in the West. Yeah, if you're going top two against top two, I think Boston and Milwaukee have a slight advantage over, I'm going to say Denver and Phoenix. If I just had to rank who I think is most likely to make the finals, sure. I'm going to put Phoenix second because Durant's back now and I think they have to be taken the most seriously. But then you go Philly against that Memphis thing. Like, what am I getting from Philly? The disheartened thing, we watched him stay healthy three and a half months. I had him second team all NBA at one point. And then he disappears. So I was got a calf, in, lower body injury yet again. Yeah. I don't know what to make of that. I don't know. This Embiid calf thing, what's going on there? Is he starting to break down? They put big miles on him in the games he played. He's playing, you know, 36, 37 minutes a game. I don't feel as good about that team. Like, they, they kind of have to show it to me. Now, they might luck out in round one because they might get Brooklyn. That even though that's going to be a weird matchup and there's like a whole universe where Jacques Vaughn just does a Norman Dale in that series and just is swarming Embiid with <laughs> interchangeable six, seven wings. He's got 20 of them. But yeah, let's be honest. That's If you're them, you'd rather play that team than Miami. That's probably why they're not that concerned about the two seed. Yeah. So anyway, it just feels like Philly's lost momentum at the worst possible time. You agree? Yeah, they, they've built a pretty strong case over the course of the year. And they've really built it based on Embiid and Harden's two-man game, based on the defense, based on the supporting cast, really finding their roles really effectively. And for Harden and Embiid to both have soft tissue leg injuries coming down the stretch, right. notoriously hard to beat, especially when you're playing consistent games. I mean, look, it's concerning. Like the, Embiid looked like at least like he was taking it a little bit easy against the Mavericks Last the other night. night. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and I get that. And he, and he turned it up when it mattered and he made every big play when it mattered. What I'm curious about is to see him in the games where you don't have that luxury, where you're not playing against a team like Dallas, where you have to go all out basically every minute you're out there. And if you're Philly, you need him out there an awful lot. Does he have that in him? Does Harden, who said he's basically been dealing with this injury on and off all year, does he have that in him? Like th there's, Those two guys are just so critical. And for both of them to have that at the same time where 
it's not even a matter of like, okay, Embiid can shoulder more because Harden can't or vice versa. Look, playoff runs have been have gone completely off the rails for l- much less than that. So I, I'm I'm a little worried about them at this point. And that was always the reason not to take that team too seriously as a contender is could those two guys stay healthy for 10 straight weeks when it mattered? Yeah. They play Toronto on uh, on Friday, tomorrow. That's home. Then they go home for the Bucks on Sunday, home for the Celtics on Tuesday, home for the Heat on Thursday, at Atlanta, finish against the Nets. There's a world where we feel great about Philly in five days, six days. And there's a world where where all of a sudden there's pulsating red flags everywhere. I have a Philly fan in my life who's convinced they're trying to tank to get to the four seed, who's also semi-insane. Um, <laughs> but, it's a good qualifier. But they are three ahead of Cleveland in the last column. I don't, I don't see it. I think they're probably stuck at three. But maybe because they're stuck at three, maybe they could experiment and really try to rest these guys. But... Well, Especially if, like, given that they have head-to-head matchups with their biggest rivals in the conference, they just might not feel super compelled to show their best stuff anyway. And, like, let's not give anyone another shot at Joel Embiid to figure out, like, where to run the double team at him from which direction and which matchup. Let's just kind of play everything a little bit slow. Let's take our Mm. time. Let's ease him and Harden through these games or in and out of these games as, as, as we need to. You could easily see that for Philly down the stretch. They They just don't need every game at this point in the way that Milwaukee and Boston might want every game. I learned this 10 years ago when I was doing countdown, the Knicks kind of peaked in mid March. I think we started multiple shows with, can the Knicks win the title? And we got all excited and a little five minute package and going around the circle. Talk, Oh, look at the three point shooting. You never want to peak in mid March. And there, there's that one team every year that peaks in mid March. It might be Philly. It might not, but, I really liked what I was seeing more from them two weeks ago. And I do think they put a lot of miles on Embiid in those games that where he was, especially when he was averaging 35, 36 a game forever. Um, Now there's no perfect way to do this. The Celtics went the other way and they were just, you know, you can tell in the first quarter what team I'm getting. It's bizarre. It's like having twin brothers. It's like tonight against the Milwaukee. And I'm like, Oh, (laughs) <laughs> the good team showed up tonight. This is great. They're driving to the basket. They they have cohesion. Um, so you never know what this stuff is. 